Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to McLean's TV. Delighted to say I'm joined by uh, one of our regular uh, contributors, All Ireland winner with Armagh, captain of the International Rules team as well. Ulster medal is coming out of his back pocket, the one and only Stephen McDonald. Stevie, we've reached the climax of the season. Dublin against Mayo. It's fair to say the two best teams in the country are in the All Ireland final. Absolutely, two best teams by a country mile. And you know, at the semi final stage, we were the whole country is possibly hoping that it would be a, a Dublin Mayo final. Well, speak for yourself, throwing people. They uh, want to well, get exactly. Mayo. <coughs> you know, Mayo throughout the year have been fantastic, and you know, certainly in the semi final, throwing people up them in the first half, but. You know, when they come out in the second half, they're a totally different animal, and they proved why they are a top class side. And, and they brushed thrown aside, and um, no disrespect to Tyrone, but um, certainly, you know, Dublin. Then you have to, you know, just stand back and watch an awe at some of their displays this year. Um, none more so than their last performance against uh, a Kerry team. You know, how many teams can can cope with Kerry scoring three goals against them in the first half and still come out in the, the right end of the the score line? And uh, there's not too many, and certainly Dublin will be the better for that. Well now before we talk about the final I think we should go back and revisit the, the semi-final because mm -hmm. that both semi-finals exposed weaknesses in both finalists because when you take a look at Mayo, Mayo were put to the pin of their collar for at least 30 minutes in the first half where Tyrone ran them ragged Absolutely. and with a bit more luck and a few more calls from a referee that could have been way away in front of Mayo. Yeah listen no disrespect to, to the other two teams but Thro Dublin and, and Mayo are, are the top two teams in the country but Tyrone and Kerry are third and fourth you know and, and that's where they are and when you get to a semi-final stage you're going to cause the opposition problems regardless of, of who they are and certainly in the first uh, match the, the Tyrone and Mayo game Tyrone caused Mayo serious problems in, in that first half and, and you know possibly could have gone in uh, maybe four or five points up but it, it was it was a, a couple of points before half time that really kept Mayo in, in the driving seat you know and gone out in the second half and um, they really believe in themselves and, and, and what they're about but you know, you look at then the the Kerry Dublin semi final. A lot of people. Well, before you go on to that, listen. I I want to make a point. I was disappointed uh, that Tyrone almost fell away before the, the the end of the break. But I was also impressed. Mayo in the past, I think, would have probably collapsed there like a deck of cards. It shows the new metal. I think of this Mayo. Yeah, side. there is there is a certain steel with this Mayo side at the minute. And I actually thought um, in the first half of, of the Tyrone match that you know. That metal, uh, mental block w was still there with them when Kevin McLaughlin, if you remember back, missing the, the mm -hmm. 21 yard free. I oh, thought, is this Mayo all over again? Thrown have, have got inside their skin and, and they're going to rattle them here big time. But then, you know, they did kick a couple of points before half time. It seemed to settle them again. They come out in the second half, a totally different team. And, you know, they were kicking their opportunities as in the first half, they weren't taking them. and. And, and and led by their by their de, by their defenders because the forwards weren't on form. The defenders came through to get those vital scores. It, it the was uh, and and cornerbacks were coming up and getting uh. scores. And, and it's always great to see that. And it shows the mentality of this Mayo side that the full confidence in their belief. And you know, they play with a certain flair at the minute and and, and a desire. And and they, they are there's a there's an arrogance about this Mayo side uh, as if to say that you know come and get us, come at us, throw whatever you have at us, and, and we'll react to it. Now the semi final, obviously Dublin against Kerry. And uh, Mickey Hart was writing in the the Irish News and got a bit of stick for it, like that, because he started to pick out a lot of the uh, the things that were wrong in that game. There was a fabulous game, but he did have a point. Uh, if you take away from the hysteria of some people getting annoyed about him, he does have a point. There was some very naive defending there by Dublin to allow Kerry in to score three goals. That surely has to give Mayo. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and Mayo are certainly. Uh, one of the better teams of scoring goals in the, in this year's championship alone, you know. But um, listen, there was naive defend, but both teams made no uh, secret about it. You know, they were going to go out to uh, try to outscore each other, and you know, if that left them a wee bit open in, in, at the back, then so be it. But um, you know, the the first half in particular, from from a Kerry point of view, w was an awesome display. A display that. Um, not too many people were expecting from them and, and obviously the Gooch put on a fantastic display from centre half forward and he was probably the main reason why, why Kerry uh, went in at half time um, leading in that match and um, you know Dublin, uh, I'll go back to the point I made earlier on, how many teams can react to Kerry mm -hmm. scoring three goals against them in the first half and still come out and win the match and the, the, the answer is there's not too many and, and Dublin are certainly um, well worth their, their place in this, this year's All-Ireland yeah. Final because of that. 
the thing about Dublin too, and, and we talked about it before, the, the thing that makes them even stronger, you know, I, I look at the Mayo bench, I don't think the Mayo bench compares to the Dublin no. bench. They can bring on players, you know, they, they can bring on players that are equally as good yeah. to put in positions, and that was the key as well against Kerry, because they can bring on quality to replace quality. There's no doubt about it. Dean Rock would walk into any county team in the country uh, and be in the starting 15. Kevin McManaman, yep. to me, he's one of the strongest ball carriers in the game and an exceptionally talented fo footballer. He comes on and does a great job for them every time because he's a top-class player and he, if he was in any other county, he'd be starting once again. They've got a really, really strong bench and that, that has carried them across the line in a couple of matches this year. You know, when they haven't been performing at their maximum, they've still you know, relied heavily on their bench and it's going to take 20 men once again this All-Ireland Final but that is the key difference between the two teams I think is Dublin's bench and their ability to pull boys from the bench and to get big scores. And a massive loss for Mayo, you know, Killian O'Connor out, one of their star players, he got a cruel blow for the lad, yeah. an awful blow for him to miss an All-Ireland after the second double injury blow but it's, it's, a, it's a vital loss for Mayo. At the time, you know, okay they were able to, to cope with their own and, get, and they got rid of it but when you know, whenever reality sets in about the Monday yeah. or Tuesday, I'd say, you know, Horn's looking at it and going, what a loss. Yeah, absolutely. Killian O'Connor, young player of the year for the last two years, a fantastic uh, talent, um, potentially one of the most dangerous forwards in the game at the minute. But, you know, Mayo have to get over it, get over that there and, and, you know, rely on the players that they have on the pitch. And, and this year, the advantage that they have over last year is that Andy Moran is going to be uh, taking his place and starting 15 and he's a fantastic player for this Mayo team. Um, Alan Freeman, if you look at his performance against Tyrone also in the semi-final, he really stepped up the plate when, 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 when it was needed and, mm -hmm. you know, he put in a solid, solid performance and, you know, he's also another key player. That, and you know, if you compare him this year compared to last year, I think he's maybe matured a wee bit more as a forward and, and has taken that wee bit more responsibility on the shoulders as well. Three or four weeks ago, everybody was putting Mayo as uh, the favourites for all Ireland, but now even here with McLean's, I think the odds have gone the other way. Dublin are now the favourites uh, to win this game. Some people are describing it as it's going to be a closer for You know, Mayo almost, you know, if, uh, as Jerry Armstrong made the point, he was talking about it, you know, but if, if they played the All Ireland final a couple of months ago, Mayo might, might have been yeah. the team. But now it looks as if Dublin have actually just just stepped beyond them. Yeah, what we have here, we've got the most skillful team in the country in Mayo. I, I believe they're most talented forwards and footballers in the country in this Mayo side against the best athletes in the country. And there's Fleur as well in the Dublin side. And you know, overall, I look at that and, and I think that you know because of the physical strength of this Dublin team and, and the backup that they have in their bench have tipped Dublin from the start I'm going to stay with Dublin the likes of Bernard Brogan Jamer Connolly they've got top class forwards that have been there and have produced it in the past in the All-Ireland Final and I believe that, that that experience of two years ago beating Kerry two years ago will stand that this uh, Dublin team comes on the, and they'll come out on top It's going to be a heartbreak again listening to you for Mayo 1951 you know if you're a Mayo fan, you know, the belief, you know, I was even looking at the, I thought it was quite funny, at the, you know, the Tour de France earlier this mm -hmm. year, you know, it had Mayo for Sam, you know, on, on the, the stage in mm -hmm. Abdues and stuff like that, you know, and like they're doing their usual, they're painting their cows, their sheep, Absolutely. their houses, their cars, the whole lot. Like you would be heartbroken for them. Absolutely, you know, and it, it is that close. It's probably the closest all Iron final, uh, you know, in years. and. I wouldn't be surprised if Mayo win it at the same time and I don't think anyone in the, in the whole country you know, will be disappointed if Mayo win it. We'd all love to see them win it after so much heartache over the past 20 years alone. But um, I just think um, experience, talent, strength, the bench, everything is stacked in, in Dublin's favour and, and the fact that this game is in, in Croke Park once again. But Mayo have had the upper hand in Dublin over the last couple of years and that'll be in the back of Dublin's minds as well and they will be looking to rectify that. Uh, I was at an event in Kalisha on Saturday night, a celebration for Kevin Hughes, all the top stars were there, you weren't there yourself, anyway, but uh, Darrell was there, <laughs> Peter Cannavan was Makes there, dig that. <laughs> the likes of Tierney, you know, obviously Hub Hughes himself, mm -hmm. Mickey Hart, people like that, and they all said what we're all saying, that they couldn't deny Mayo to win an All-Ireland, but yet they're now going for Dublin, and I haven't said that, you couldn't deny Dublin either, I think no. they're two of the most... Is this a stage that two of the most likeable teams yeah. in the All Ireland final? I, exactly. I like Dublin. Exactly, <laughs> I like Dublin as well. And uh, you know, I always, as a player, I always enjoy playing against Dublin because of the atmosphere and 
and it's, it's a carnival atmosphere that the whole supporters to uh, bring to the to, to the occasion and you know it's going to be no different this sunday it's going to be a fantastic electric atmosphere in crook park mayo supporters are fantastic as well they're traveling big numbers and um, they will have high hopes going into crook park on sunday and they've every reason of high hopes because any one of these teams can win but i'm just basing my my opinion and and the reason why i think dublin will win just totally because of their experience of being there in the past and, and the bench that they have to got to rely on.